<laughs> but how do you feel about flips, though? <clears throat> um, this is what I feel about as it. a producer. As a producer, I think flips are good. I think that being able to make it, especially a version that somebody doesn't even recognize the original, is even better. Mm. Um, but also too, like, think about somebody who's like a 19 year old kid or 17 year old kid. He doesn't know anything about 50 Cent and how amazing like In the Club was. So imagine like somebody using a sample of In the Club and making like a new big hit. It's kind of like, I don't know. Usually they usually they'll end up seeing like the original and get to like appreciate it. Does the artist make any money off that? Yeah, for sure. The original artist makes Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, does the new artist make any money? Like, what's the point of flipping it? You know, like what's the benefit? It's just like kind of Well, you don't get publishing, but like you get you get paid off it like royalties. So like clearing a sample. Um, they might take like a a piece of the master, like, but that's if you're like sampling Tupac or like Whitney Houston or something. But like if you're sampling like like Lil John or some, who's actually the GOAT, by the way. But if you're sampling Lil John, he'll take maybe like 25% publishing and a small piece of the master. Meaning if this song goes platinum, you still made a shit ton of money. Mm. The new producer makes less money on it because he has to share it with the original writer. Mm. So it's kind of like how it works. Do you ever sample? All the time. Mm. Amazing. Sampling is like amazing. I like sampling, like, there's a song, I've sampled so many random shit on Mozzie's album, I sampled this girl, Yeba, and she ended up being on Drake's album. Oh, like, yeah. But I sampled her, like, probably four years before she was on Drake's album, and that was pretty dope. But so, like, re regardless of the sample, you the artist gets paid? Like, what if you make it your own, you know what I'm saying? Like, So, there's a difference between sampling and interpolation. So, sampling means you're using the real, actual like file of the original music now if let's just say um an example how we just listened to the trey song song and then we heard Jer jeremiah redo it mm -hmm. he didn't use the he 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 redid it so it's like it's just an interpolation so they usually like the the original writer usually gets less money from it like they don't really get like that big of a cut for it so the new writer gets like the most gets more at least yeah, man. Well, Davo has a lot of good game, and I appreciate you sitting down. We got to just we get right, right we'll now? get right started into the pod, man. Oh, I, how, how you I, feeling? I'm feeling great, man. I'm with my, my boy. Yeah, man. We got Davo here on the pod. It's been a long time coming. Facts for Shirley. You know, you're a man of many talents and many hats. Producer, A&R, manager. I'm going to take you with me around places, bro. Please. <laughs> I, please. I would, I would love that, bro, because I just, I just love how you operate how you move bro and appreciate that you know like boy. coming from sag like you were actually someone i really look up to look, so to be able to sit down with you man this shit means a lot look man this means a lot there was only one other podcast i've ever been on who's also a very good friend of mine so me being here i hate being on camera i hate doing anything so vice versa <laughs> hell vice yeah man boy. um well shit man i feel like we should just start in the beginning uh just to get some backstory like what's up coming up in sag what was that like um uh, Really just like like going to parties, house parties and shit. Um, that's kind of like where I kind of like started being introduced to music and stuff. And uh, um, grew up, uh, went to this this school in the hood called Genesis. And um, they had an after school program, bro. And they had, uh, they gave us Fruity Loops. And I went home and really uh, I wanted to be a rapper at the time. So I didn't know Fruity Loops could really make beats. I was trying to rap and shit on there. And um, at that time, I think you could only get beats on SoundClick. You remember SoundClick? Nah, it was a little before my time. Damn, bro, how old is you? I'm 28, 29. All right, I got you by like a year or two. So you don't remember SoundClick? I wasn't in the mix like that, making music and stuff. All right, well, SoundClick was like the YouTube type beat spot. Like you can go buy beats or like download shit, rip beats off there. I remember LimeWire. LimeWire was solid. But yeah. people weren't ripping beats off LimeWire. No, like yeah, that, mixtape or like watching hella porn on there. Uh, for sure. They put the porn off. off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the LimeWire porn that was an error, bro. That was the real, that was an error. Oh, what? Bro. Yeah, no, I never did that, but I didn't even know that was a thing. I thought it was just for music, but shit, it was like. Man, anybody who's watching this, I was on LimeWire, everybody was, was going crazy. Brett behind the camera, you could tell he was going crazy. 
Yeah, getting viruses and shit. That's why I was scared to use Lime uh, LimeWire because the viruses that. and shit. I feel that. Anything you downloaded came with like cranked out Soldier Boy MP3. Oh yeah, that was great though. Oh yeah, great era. All right, so wait, so you were trying to rap first though? I was trying to rap, bro. I thought I was the nigga, but I wasn't. Do you still have any of those raps? Nah, never. I think about. I think somebody found one. I think Sally Rue found a song, one song by me. I thought it was wiped off the internet. Uh, but yeah. What was your rap name? Davo. Davo. Same thing. Not a young Davo, a little Davo. Just... It was all Davo, bro. <laughs> Same. It never changed, bro. And uh, but I wanted to be a rapper, and I didn't have beats, so that's why I started trying to make beats on uh, Fruity Loops, and shit, it worked out. But like. Why did why, like what made you want to start rapping though? You just always um, love music. Nah, bro, it's so funny. Random story. It was this boy um, we went to school with. He used to always come to school and tell us uh, he was going to the studio with Blapstar. And at the time, Blapstar was like the nigga in Sacramento. And I used to always be like, "Bro, you full of shit." And he like we had like just some random ass competition where uh, he can go make a song before we can go make a song. Cause I was like, "Bro, I could get in the studio before you do." And uh, that was, and that's what kind of started the whole thing. Yeah, that's what, that's what started it all, bro. But right did you way. did you win? Or yeah, did you... me and my boy Kenny, we went to the crib. We had a like a gaming USB microphone. We made a rap. Went to school. That was a Friday. We went to school on Monday. Had a song, talking shit. It was a diss song. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't like a diss song. It was just, it was a diss song. It was like, it was it was a diss song. But yeah, that was that was kind of like the how the idea of music started. So like ever since you were a kid. You kind of been like hands on and proactive, uh, for sure. Cause that's one thing I like working with you on the basketball stuff. Yeah, I was just mind blown that you had the time to edit and learn how to edit and like really focus on that part of the craft. Where it's like, damn, you you think this multi platinum producer <laughs> slash recorder ain't trying to fucking edit these videos? You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I like I have a bad problem with like when I like something, I just dive into it. Mm. So like. <clears throat> like some random whether it's like if i don't know if me and you bet that i can't do something i'm gonna try to do it the best i could do it i'm gonna spend hours and hours on researching it if i'm gonna do it so that was kind of like but you're right i spend too much time on that shit i mean i it kind of motivated me though you that's know what good. i'm saying because I'm I, I feel like too like you should never stop learning new shit yeah that's what i'm always I, bro i always feel like i'd rather go broke I, I would I wouldn't I would hate going broke, but I would wouldn't mind going broke like trying hella shit. Like trying to hit. Like most of my shit that I made a lot of money off outside of music was just a random idea, running with it, seeing if it was really gonna work and it actually worked. Yeah, also too, like on the other side of that, like being able to do a lot of the things yourself, it kinda you don't have to rely on people as much True. too, which is like that's kinda it's it's kinda bad. <laughs> you know, because it could kind of stunt your growth where it's just for like, sure. I could do everything. I'm trying to do it for myself. Sure. For sure. You know, because I find myself where I'm just like, man, I could give this edit to someone else or, you know, have someone else come and shoot this thing. Yeah. But I just like, I just, you know, it's <laughs> mine. It, it you feels know? way better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like so baby, I feel that. So wait, so you, you made your own beat off Fruity Loops and then wrapped off it yeah, off, a, super, off a gaming? Super shitty beat though. Like by far super, super shitty. But yeah. That we was tired. And why did why'd you make your own beat? Uh, we just couldn't. We didn't know how to like get a beat off of like SoundClick without paying for it at the time. And I was like, it wasn't Apple Pay and all type of random shit. It was like you have to have a credit card. Mm. And none of our parents had credit cards or anything. So like, we were like, shit, we gonna make this beat with a trial version, and it worked. When? How long did it take you to transition from like, all right, when, like when did it? Re when you realize like, damn, I might not have the best bars, but these beats are kind of hidden. Like, man, it took a long time, too long actually. Probably took about like a couple years. Was it? Was it discouraging? Like, nah, I think I was so young too. I was like thirteen, fourteen. So like, by the time I got to like seventeen, I was like, all right, look, this rap shit ain't for me, and I was still kept making beats. So it was like, like. I'm going I'm to try to make beats. That's it. And the reason for making beats was just so you could rap on them? Yeah, that it was it. It wasn't like I'm going to establish a business nothing or anything, at, you know, like, or all, become bro. a multi-platinum <laughs> producer? No, bro. I'm just making this shit so I can rap on it, me and the homies. That's pretty amazing. That's love, bro. I didn't think about it. That's kind of fire. Yeah, that's wild. So, like, when did you actually start selling beats? Um, 
man, I was selling beats for anything, bro. I'll sell beats for like puppies and shit. <laughs> like ran, random shit. So like You're bartering the beats? Bro, anything, bro. At that point it was like just for somebody to give you something for a beat was insane to me. Like, bro, if you give me forty bucks, I could do ten of these, bro. Like, would you give me four hundred bucks? Like, I'm you know, I'm sixteen years old, I'll be fire. But uh probably around like like sixteen. But these are terrible beats though. I don't want anybody to think like I was just like hella raw, a 16-year-old prodigy making amazing beats. Trash. But Trash at the time, beat. you think they're so hard. Oh, man, I thought I was. That's, that's that's because like I wasn't hella like on YouTube and like I don't, like, I don't even know how old was I. What year was that when I was six, 16? If YouTube was out. YouTube when came, were you born? 92. 92? Shit. So 2012, I was 10. So now nah, YouTube was out. Yeah, because YouTube, YouTube was out like, I think. Out like yeah, so oh, YouTube nine. was out, but I wasn't just on there just like seeing like hella producers in the studio like making shit at that time. Like you still used like like NPC boards and all type of shit like that. So like I thought I was the nigga, man, nigga. And you know, NorCal music, our 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 beats are fairly simple too. But is there beauty in the simplicity as a beat maker? I think so. I think uh, overcrowded beats don't leave room for vocals. Mm. So, like, I think, like, that's why you hear, like, like, a lot of the goats, like, look at, like, DJ Mustard, like, when he started, he he maybe didn't have, like, 20 sounds in the beat, but it left so much room for, like, vocals and ad-libs and all type of, all type of harmonies and shit. And no one was teaching you how to make beats. You were just Hell, trial and error, and you didn't even I, have YouTube because what? There weren't no. there weren't beat tutorials and shit. Fuck! I w- if I had somebody teaching me beats, um, I would have been, I would have been really raw. I was weak as fuck. I'd been raw. That just sounds mad overwhelming. It's like, all right, I'm gonna one. I'm a rapper. I'm not even a beat maker, and then I'm gonna make these beats blindly pretty much <laughs> like you know what i'm saying like nah, i feel that did you have any musical background nah nothing at all bro never never nothing i just but i really always loved music since i was a kid ironically like like a lot of my early early memories i remember like getting in trouble i stole a cd from target what cd um it was yin gang twins united states of atlanta classic 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 album bro my mom didn't really let me listen to like hell crazy music so i used to have to sneak it so really yeah they were like strict nah my mom wasn't strict she like you know my, like we in the hood so she trying to keep me as far you know you know what it is yeah she's trying to she not just gonna let me crash out for sure but i was like nah i gotta hear this so i was always under the impression like producers they have to like be like they have to know a musical instrument I think great producers, I don't want to say that, actually. I feel like any producer who's great, if they didn't know an instrument, as they got greater, they naturally wanted to learn an instrument. So, like, I don't want to say, like, you have to play instruments to, like, be a really good producer. Um, I know producers who are, like, like amazing. Like, Go Grizz is, like, amazing producer. He'll tell you, I don't play piano. I, like, click in. People talk shit. It's like, how can you talk shit? This guy has 100 platinum singles. But um, I think a lot of people, producers, as they get like more success, they naturally want to at least try to learn how to play piano. So, yeah, I was like, do you feel like you got bars on the keyboard? Or? I have decent bars. I have decent. That's like a, a, a task you got to really dive in and like practice, practice. Huh? I'm like good enough, though. So when did you feel like you were like, all right, man, my beats, people are really fucking with my beats? Um, you know, in Sacramento, that's easy. If you get one song that's kind of popping, you feel like the nigga. Because, bro, I, I, like, my whole, my little, like, my high school years, college years, it was, Dave will make me a bro, slap. If you heard that, it was kind of slap, just bro. bro yeah. so, like, I think, um, it's crazy. I think, um, I did a song for HBK Skipper and Showbanger, and, um, I was like super young. Beat was terrible. Like you could find it on YouTube right now. What's the song called? It's called T U. It was like Turn Up. Right? And um, you know, at that time, like in Sacramento, we were off HBK so tough. It was like crazy. And so I thought I was like I'm on. Bro, I, I'm I on. HBK I'm rich. fuck with me. I'm gonna be like man, I'm gonna be rich forever. And um 
I think that was like the first moment I was like, oh shit, this is kind of dope. You sold him the beat? Nah, I gave it to him for the F. Mm. Man, my whole first probably like probably like five years was all free beats. But why though? Um, just because I feel like if you're a, if you're a beginning producer, this shit is all about repetition. That's how you're gonna get better, and it's like throwing darts on the board. The more darts you throw, you know, you might hit hit the middle. And um, with a song, you never know where a hit comes from. Now look at like. Every every year, there's a song from an artist that comes out of nowhere, and it's their first song, and it's platinum. Mm. So um, I think that's always been like the goal. Until you get a platinum song, then you're like, all right, man, now, now you gotta pay me. Yeah, I feel like too. It's like if I'm a beat maker, I'm I'm trying to network, right? I see, hundred percent. Like I'm gonna just throw you free beats. Yeah, it's like it's there's a lot of parallels being a producer and like making videos. Like, I feel you. you know, I feel that 100%. Where it's like, you know, you're kind of making art for someone else. For sure. You know what I'm saying? For Especially, sure. Especially, I'm speaking like in terms of like music videos and stuff, yeah. like specifically, like you're basically making a video interpreting someone else's vision type of thing, you know, 100%. based on the music. Yeah. So it's like, as a producer, do you feel like, you could make beats for yourself or do producers do that? I definitely make beats for myself. Like I make beats that I know nobody else is going to get on, but like either I'm testing my own talent or it's just some shit that like I might have wanted to see if I could make like a mozzie type beat using fucking Ying Neptune's Yin Game Twin. Twin. <laughs> like make it like a mozzie type vibe. So I know nobody might not ever want to use this, but it was just for me. Yeah, because I like I could just see like producers kind of getting put into a box, like trying to make a sound for a specific artist. You know, where it's that. like, all right, I'm going into this making it to sound like a Mozzie type beat or yeah. it's like like a you know Neptunes or a Pharrell type beat. Like yeah. finding your style is super important in filmmaking. Hundred percent. Like, do you feel like a producer has to find a style? Hundred percent. Because most of the time, if you're making uh we'll just say like a YG type beat. He's already off that sound. He's already done 10 of these beats. And now he's like looking to try something in this world, in this world. So if you're trying to chase them, that's like, you want them to kind of chase your sound. And like, I'll come across a producer and be like, I need 10 beats from you because your vibe is, is different. Do you feel like YouTube beats are good or bad for the game? I think great for the game. I think um, this is a way to get out there. Like, look how many great songs have came from YouTube beats. And you could buy YouTube beats for cheap as shit. Any artist now, you could, like, put out a song the right way for very cheap now. I can go buy a YouTube beat for 150 bucks and put it out legally, have rights, put it on DistroKid, and strike gold off it. Really? And isn't that, like, a dream? That's the goal, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, like, the goal <laughs> for me. It's, it's an obtainable goal with YouTube beats. Yeah, man, I'm just I'm just so curious. We were just sitting and talking with the with Hit Boy, and I was just like, wow, like this. He was talking about how like the producers kind of get the shorthand of the stick too sometimes. All the time. All you know, time. you have to deal with that all the time. I think um, that's why I have a lot of great relationships with producers because I come from being a producer. So like, like whether it takes a little while because the label's taking a long time, I make sure every producer around me gets paid. If you do something on the album, you're gonna get paid. It might be a process. You might have to go through this, but I make sure and like I find the producers and like get their information and reach out to them. Hey, bro, I want to use this beat, blah, blah, blah. I want to make sure you get paid. Some of them have never sold a beat in their life. Mm. And they're like, give me 500. I'm like, ah, bro, I'll give you a thousand. It's cool. So like, I think uh, that's that's really, really important to like look out for the producers. We like the backbone. Yeah, I mean, shit, it's just like, it's kind of motivating, you know? It's like a young beat maker. I'm, as soon as you start making money from your craft, that's where it's just like, all right, man, I'm not going to give up. Or <laughs> like, sure. I got to keep going and for shit. For sure, for sure. So, so when you made that transition from rapping to producing, like, did you fall in love with producing more than rapping? Or? 100%. I like, 100%. Like, I, I producing, it was like, I'm up till three in the morning, four in the morning. Like, I'm looking for, like, sound packs and new sound kits and, like, Zaytoven beat packs and shit like that. Like, rapping was just, like... An introduction? Yeah, it was, like, an introduction. I wanted to say for fun, but, like, making beats was, like, for fun, too. Like, 
rapping was just like, eh, I'm trying it. Beats was like, oh yeah, I, I would do this for free. So before you were a manager, you were a producer. For sure. I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. That's what's so like dope about Davo is like he's he morphs into whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, I feel like all good managers, you gotta come from, you gotta have some some skill to make you understand it. In my opinion, whether it's like you are a photographer, like you do videos, you could easily manage an artist because just like you look at creativity a certain way. In my opinion, at mm. least, uh, I don't know how, but. Think like if you're a photographer, a videographer, if you like, you can kind of relate to the artist. Yeah, you can relate to the artist. Like you, you care about art. Like some people like care about the business and the money making part, but like you care about just making art the best, the highest capability. Yeah. So like, what does what does a manager even do? What are they responsible for? <sighs> Man, I think I feel like everything, everything, bro. It all falls on the manager. It's, it's like a janky situation. Uh, if something goes wrong, it it just falls on your lap. But uh, I think we'd be, I don't have enough time to tell you what a manager does. But I think um, a good manager helps the artist get their vision out. Mm. Um, some people would say that's like the A&R. I guess that's true. But I think a good manager, you have to be kind of like an A&R also. Because um, you're almost like your artist's close friend. Who better to tell them that a song is weak or not it besides you? Um, most a and you can't tell an artist their shit sucks. And a uh, manager, you got to be able to do that. I think um, making sure they're on time and, like, some artists, some artists mean well, but they, they you just you just need to be on top of them. I think um, some of the best artists, you just got to be on top of them. Because, like, not all managers are created equal type of thing. There's different types, there's different <sighs> levels sure. and shit like that, right? Yeah, I have this combo with people, and I hate, I hate even having these combos on camera because I feel like, who am I to fucking tell somebody they're good or not good? But uh, I think. But I mean, there's probably key traits on like what makes a like a successful, not even good, but just successful. I would consider you a successful manager. I appreciate it. I think like a good manager, you got to be able to develop an artist. That's mm. what I'll say. I think be able to develop an artist. Some some like managers get an artist when they're already hot because they have a name or something, and then they like you know they disappear or whatever. I think being able to get in a studio with a like an artist who doesn't have a big name and grind it out and make millions of dollars that takes a lot and i think uh, that's a great manager mm. so like did you come to mozzie and pitch him on like yo let me manage you or how did that relationship Man, even start mozzie's hella funny um uh, like i was i was i was making a lot of music with june on the beat at the time and um you know if you're from sacramento you're from sacramento For everybody sure. like you just know you you've already heard Mozzie's music like over the years, and so um, I would just I reached out to him. I'm like, hey, bro, like you're really. He'll tell you, I was like, you're really tight. I think like if you really take it serious, bro, you can be like one of the best rappers. Like, like I really think that. And this was he was Mozzie at the time, or was he Little Tim? Um, uh, he was still Little Tim at the. time. So I'm not, I think he might have. He might have been Mozzie Memba on Instagram. Have, yeah, that I think era. He might have been Mozzie <laughs> on Instagram. Um, but it was like really, really early. I think like I can't even think of the year, but really, really, really early. Like I think we like a decade in of just me just like working with him. Damn. And um, at that time, like like I was I was working with Sue and Sage and everybody like that. And um, you know, at that time the music scene in Northern California was totally different. For sure. Totally, totally different. And I was, I was seeing the shift in music, but he was, he's, he's like a generational talent. And so I was just telling him that he's like, man, bullshit. And I'm like, nah, bro, you, you could really, you could really like be one of the guys. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of like how. So you went. like you like DM'd him on Instagram type shit, or like nah, got his number? We were, like, nah, did you we were, did you have a relationship with nah, him already? We were around each other, like just the studio studio shit. Like I think I, June had a studio at his house. Um, I had a studio at the crib. I used to always be around. Like June was like me and him made a lot a lot of music even before me and Mozzie. Mm. And so uh, yeah, because he was rapping too. He raps. Yeah, and he produces. was rapping. Yeah. yeah. So like me and him, we uh, we was we was making we was we made so many beats, just hella crazy shit. Um, he got some slaps too. Man. Bangers. Shout out to June on the Bro, beat. Bro, June on the beat is the best producer to ever come out of Sacramento. 
like the best producer to ever come out of Sacramento to this day. There's some up and coming shit coming out right now, but like to this day, he's the best producer to come out of Sacramento. And he raps. And he raps. And his raps are yeah, hard, too. Nah, <laughs> he, 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 he definitely was popping his shit. So, yeah. I mean, do you remember like, like your first time recording with Mozzie or like, because you meet him as what a producer and then i feel like you have to some time has to go by or you're just like no nah, i think I, like what made you even want to like believe in him or like make that he rap hella good make that move to be like all right i'm gonna manage him you know what i'm saying like i make these beats but oh uh, i think he was two things he was from sacramento and i was on some like bro he rapped so good like, you seen potential in him yeah but like not fully like where he was at at the moment like how good your talent is you can rap on any type of beat so like like you can compete like not competing locally like this you can compete on like a worldwide level if you know if we just keep making music so that was kind of like my 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 plan with him and was he like off rip ready to go or was he skeptical he fucked, at first no, he was like <laughs> i fuck with mazi because he he liked me he's like uh man people could say anything and so um I was just like you're kind of to prove it that you were serious. Type yeah, of thing? I feel I feel like that, but it was on some like I think I think we met super briefly one time. Um, this is outside of just being in the same room making music type shit. And I was like, look, man, tomorrow's Heartbreak Halloween, man. Come pull up for me, man. And at that time, it was like G Easy's there, uh, Sue's there, um, YG's there. Everybody's coming. I'm like, bro, like. Like, pull up, we're gonna, we gonna go have. We drove to San Francisco, bro. <laughs> we drove to Frisco, and uh, and I was just on some like, bro, this is the vibe, like, you, this is your level of shit, bro, like, you, you belong like this, you know, what I mean, popping it, and uh, yeah, I was they started out. fucking with you after that, nah, not even now, like, it was still that was just like one moment, just we planted the seed, yeah, we just kept, kept working, kept doing music, um, I ended up like DJing for him. I was like DJing for him for like a while, but still like making music with him, making beats, um, having other producers come in, make beats for him, having uh, videographers and like, you know, hey, bro, like you should do a song with I'm Sue. That's my boy. Let's do it. Let's have y'all do a song, shoot a video. Um, you should do a song with Sage, but not no street shit. Like, like show him you could rap and do different shit. And uh, that was kind of like my first couple of times with him. It was like, we ended up locking in. So you were like setting up plays like that? 100%. Like, because he's really that good. That was my thing about it. It was like, like, I don't see you as like this, this, I don't see you just being just a local gangster rapper and making, you know, $100,000, whatever. In order for you to be a superstar artist, you got to be able to make R&B music, do whatever. And uh, I nigga raw. Do you feel like having that background, though, makes it harder? Um, Like to be good, like to really? I think, I think, so, but when you have the talent, you've been, you've rapped on any type of things. Like, I mean, Mozzie example, like you can go find freestyles of him rapping on like a random ass beat or like Erica Badu type beat. And it's like, if you're like a really good rapper, you practice on anything. Mm. You don't just turn on a, you know what I mean? A Mozzie type beat and just rap. Like if you take that talent serious, you rap rap. You can, you can beat on the desk and rap. Yeah. And at that time, were you pitching any, any, other artists on hey i can man i should manage you or um i think at the time i didn't know fully what a manager was i was doing like everyday shit for like showbanga at the mm. time showbanga was like beating northern california up, yeah, like, alive like we i've toured with sue and like showbanga like four or five times um i've like toured with sage um like just just i didn't know what a manager was at the time i was just like facilitator you know what I mean? Just, just connecting look. dots. Yeah, I had a studio at the crib. We used to record a shit ton of music at my house. Um, I would introduce them, like I, I introduced them to June, like, hey, this this nigga's raw. Like I said now, like he's the rawest producer. You guys should work with him. I'll bring the other producers in. I'll bring, you know, find a videographer in Sacramento. We we work. So um, I didn't know what a manager was, but yeah, because if I'm a rapper, I'm thinking, I'm I'm sold just solely based on the fact you make beats yeah all right bro you want to manage me come on man make some beats you know what i'm saying no, like <laughs> yeah and no, i had the studio too we we like sacramento we really we was we had the music shit like locked in for for a long i mean still do i would say but like for a while how much of the success of a manager relies on the artist 
Oh uh, man, like at mo- least most like, of it, right? I would think. I would say fifty percent. I would say fifty percent because as a manager, you could do other shit for somebody else, and it it boosts your morale. You know what I mean? It might not be an artist you manage, but it's like I feel like a great art, a great manager. You just create value in mm-hmm. any way, like whatever it is, you just create value. And so, if I create value for somebody else who isn't my artist, but he blows and does something big it's still value for me which i can like give to the artist so how did you initially like lock that in to be like all right i'm i'm your manager now or you know what i'm saying like how long did that take man it's crazy i don't know i feel like i'll be lying if i told you i think like i would think like a steady six months mm. like a real six months of us just working locking in every day type shit though in the studio like in the morning, what we on, bro? What you doing? Like, let's get in the studio. I think about like a solid six months. It might have even been longer, but I would say six months. And and what's the relationship like making music with him? Like, how often are you guys arguing about shit? Or you know, nah, what I'm saying? because never. never. I think him. He he. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say because you have to have that relationship where it's like, all right, I'm gonna tell you your shit trash, but you can't be mad at me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta have a healthy. See, I think two things. Relationship. Is, two things is. I've worked with a lot of artists. He's one person that he doesn't, he won't make trash. It's like, I think his thing is he'll make, he he raps so good, he could rap at 50% and it'd be good. And that's be my thing. It'd be like, I know this is 50% you. He know it too. So it don't be like an argument. He'd be like, you don't like it? Like, yeah, I ain't really tried too much, but it, that's like our most, most arguments about stuff. But like, like he very much open to music and trying new shit and like, trying shit that's i think why he's so successful is that he's down to try shit and if it's weak we delete it nobody ever hears it if it's fire it's like oh shit we scored so i think um i don't think we ever really like and and i'm very big on like if you love the song and i don't like the song we're keeping it like there's so many songs where i do not like this song but if you love this song usually your fans are going to love it also so like keep it no no pressure yeah, because you started out, what you said in that interview, you were a fan of him. Were you a fan of him before you even started, you know? Yeah, fan of, I was a fan of him. It's like this, it's like, I was more of a fan of his, like, artistry than a lot of the songs. It was like, bro, this dude can rap. What bro, songs like, did he have out at the time? Like, when did you guys start seeing some traction? Um, I feel like it's easy to say, like, blah, blah, blah. You would say, like, you've seen, like, traction. You were, around, that was around the time? That you was were... around the time. I was like, Around the time I was around him and shit like that, um, I think blah da da. But like, it's like so many moments. That I'm trying to think like, what was the moment? I would, what was the moment where it was like, like blah da is great. Blah da is like the moment that cracked. But like, I'm trying to think of like, I think sleepwalking was like a real moment that was like, you're gonna be rich forever. Mm. Like you, you, what I thought you were, you really are that guy. Like you can make music outside of like this this one specific genre in my opinion well like during those blooded out days did like that shit was going crazy yeah, yeah, yeah you had like a lot of people reaching out trying to connect and shit for sure or? man radio stations everybody i, I got blotted on the radio bro damn one i think 103.5 played blotted on the radio that is crazy to hear out loud that is that is not a song that should be played on the radio <laughs> in sacramento if you are from sacramento <laughs> You know, blah, blah, blah should not be played on Sacramento radio airways. Bro, I just remember watching that video and I was just like, damn, that shit is, this is crazy because, you know, really like his success and your guys' success had like a trickle down effect. I've talked to you about this with yeah. me, like as a video dude coming up in SAC during that time, bro, like it just was so motivating for other people to try to start rapping or, you know what I'm saying? It just created such a bigger economy for, for that sure. shit for like a video man like me to actually be able to that. survive no i feel that I, I think sacramento all we needed was just like a tiny blueprint like we always got to see other people from different places where there was like the bay la and it's like you almost think like man their circumstances are different from mine. So i whether i know about it or don't i just assume that it's something different maybe they knew this person but like seeing somebody from your hometown is like oh that nigga wasn't shit like me like, if I try, I might be able to do it, too. Like, that shit. We always needed that. That's all we needed. Yeah, man, because it was, like, 
People were not fucking with Sack. Even if, no. you're, if, you're, if you're from the Bay, you were not yeah. fucking with Sack. You weren't red fucking with Stockton. Stockton. Yeah, like, that was, we weren't even in the conversation like Fuck that type no. of thing, you know? Man, they, man, I used to talk, I used to call us crazy shit. They thought we was not the niggas. But that Time frustrates you, bro. <laughs> 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 no, but I think it's important that, like, you know, that, like, bro, we are the same. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, that whole Bay versus Sac Everything shit, is you know, totally like, the same, bro. Every, if you grew up in, in the Sacramento, you listen to Bay Area music. We just didn't have any music scene. So it was no, like, it was no way for, like, the Bay Area to listen to Sacramento music also. Because we didn't have really nobody. But, like, you know, I'm pretty sure, like, the OGs, like, old Bay Area dudes, they listen to, like, you know, T-Nutty and, like, Sibo yeah. and shit like that. I'd imagine. But uh, our era... We just didn't really have that, so yeah, they thought we was just bullshit. Nah, I know, bro. <laughs> I was like, that was like my my senior year. I remember, like, bro, the, the, they were just playing like early Mozzie songs, and I'm just like, damn, like this is crazy. Like, not really, but you know, it was like I kind of like compare him to like Chief Keef of like Shy Rag type shit. Bro, it was no like bullshit. It was like, damn, you know, you had a, like a lot of like dudes like me. Listening to this hood ass shit, Facts. like you bro, know, this is not really out of my city. Yeah, but this... not, but then wanting to dive in deep and kind of figure out like, hold on, what the fuck is really going on, and just open up my eyes to a whole bunch of shit. But yeah. it allowed me to like really have a career in like shooting videos, low key, like indirectly. You know what I'm saying? No, I, know. Like, I get what you mean. I think uh, the that market just like opened up wide, bro. Like the the street, like. Finding a cameraman, like making a song in the studio tonight and shooting a video for it tomorrow was like, tch, uh, I, I was and there. I've been in some grimy places in Sac shooting videos, bro. So I'm what's just the like, grimiest man. spot you've been in? <sighs> I've been to a lot. We put it on wax, bro. <laughs> what's the grimiest spot you've hey, been? Hey man, there's a lot. There's a lot out there. Hey, because I know we we've definitely. Put this. What's your grimy Sacramento music video shooting story? <sighs> I remember I was in the car with this one dude and. He was just like damn near fresh out, mm -hmm. and we were just mobbing like a caravan, like just <laughs> swerving. And I was, I was the only reason why I drove with him is because my gas was on E, and we had to go far away. Yeah, and I was so fucking stressed out. And I remember like a cop drove by, and then he was just, he got like a little <laughs> little anxious, and and then it was just like, like I just remember the cop drove by again, and and then he was just like, hey, like you're driving the shit. I'm like. No, he's gonna make you take. He's gonna, you <laughs> gonna make you take the police. I, I, had a, I had a no, no. We were stopped, but it was just like, yo, like if it comes, like, like you, you were driving type okay, shit. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it wasn't like they weren't like following us, but it was just, it was a scary ass moment. I just remember like, all right, bro, I'm never gonna drive in another person's car like like that. that. I've been in some wild shit, so I feel that. That shit, bro. That shit was stressful, man. Do you feel like you have to move out of sack in order to be successful? um with the internet i still think so opportunity um it's like this in sacramento how many recording studios are there maybe two three but like if i could really think of my head two that you know it's like good quality like you go to somewhere else go to the bay area go to like los angeles go to atlanta how many studios can you find it's like at least 30. there's kind of like a ceiling yeah I, I just think um to compete my thing is always like to compete if you're trying to compete with like somebody locally you can do that from sacramento if you're trying to compete and be like man i want to i want to live specifically off music and and compete with you know yg in la or compete with kendrick lamar compete like in any way you in my opinion yeah so like when did you start like making a living off off the music um a living or like being able to live well i mean <laughs> I there's there's different... that survival period yeah, right yeah, where it's sure. like bro like i'm I'm doing what it takes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, I mean, shit, we'll just start it there. Like, 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 when did you really touch some money where it's just like, all right, man, like, I feel like this is what I'm doing. This is me now. Man, no bullshit. I got a $100,000 check um, in music, and I couldn't believe it. Damn. I said, bro, 100000 is in my, I, like, I was waiting up to, like, midnight because I knew it was going to come, and it didn't come at midnight. I'm like, this shit's fake as fuck. Go to sleep finally. I wake up five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, check it, and it's in there. In your bank? Yeah, and I'm like, what the fuck? And were you like kind of were you struggling at the time or just like For surviving? Sure. I was just surviving, bro. 
I was just surviving. Couldn't believe it, man. Like, couldn't believe it. Still, still make me laugh right now. Yeah, because also, too, now that I think about it, like, you guys stayed independent relatively long. No, Longer sure. than most, you know what I'm yeah, saying? And we went and did one album with a major, and it's like, bro, we still, like, on our master, we still had to pay for, like, so much shit. Like, Mozzie's whole career, I think, is very unique. I always tell him that it's because... A lot of rappers who, even some rappers who like the world would say like, oh man, he's he's bigger than this person. Like Mozzie makes more money off music, off his catalog than, like I hear people like 21 Savage talk about it and I know he's getting money off his catalog because how he talks about it like how I talk about it. Like you guys have no idea what owning your music feels like. Like 21 Savage probably gets quarter million a month, every month. Just off his catalog because he he was he was independent. So was that like something er, you focused on early on? Like was that like a thing? Like all right, now we're gonna do this independent, or did it just kind of happen organically? Um, I think a little bit of both. I think he's very smart. I'm very smart. I think we both were always like, um, like we he wasn't like you know a 19 year old kid coming into the game. You know what I mean? And just like give me as much money as I can. I got it was always like, man, like let's let's like let's put our best foot forward like for longevity wise and um there's hella times we wanted to sign like to a major but we couldn't get the deal that we thought well we knew was fair and so it was like bro we dug it up but the deals were coming in or all the time. being pitched to you man all the time it like how labels work anytime you have a song that's doing decently well labels are calling you from all over the place so let alone somebody who's had songs that are done really well like labels are like they want, a, they want a piece of that. Yeah, I feel like, too, just, like, it's just, like, the Northern California culture to just, like, remain independent. And we kind of are, like, skeptical of just, like, majors and just the industry. And I feel like that kind of holds us back sometimes. 100%. I was just about to say, please, if you're watching this, do not, do not fully, like, believe into that. I think, um, I think this shit is all based upon circumstances. If you were, like, dead broke living somewhere and somebody's offering you i'm just a real nigga somebody's offering you seven hundred thousand dollars who am i to tell you don't take the 700 and go somewhere and take 10 like seven hundred thousand is life-changing money it's gonna affect you and everybody around you so like or if you don't have the proper team me and mozzy like we recorded most of his music at like my house for a long like periods of time a lot of albums recorded you know at my studio you know where we have like we able to do we have our own infrastructure if you don't have that bro go get with somebody who has that because then you could just be a rapper mm. that's dope yeah because i remember i i, I want to say it was you you posted something on instagram where it's like dudes rather have 100 percent of zero than Thank whatever you. like uh what is it like 10 percent of seven hundred thousand or some shit like that what are or we talking about a million you know? what are we talking about like like man i seen jay-z post say that and that's what, what I agreed with it so much. That's why I posted it. But 100%, people be like so hard on like, I'm doing it by myself. For what? What's the goal? It's to like make millions of dollars off music and never have to like have a nine to five, right? Like there's no blueprint. If there was a blueprint to say do this and you'll be rich, man, everybody. So you guys, you guys ever get real close to signing or just we're just like, man, I'm already touching money. Oh no, hella you know close. We did we did office we did like meetings, all type of shit. They just they, when the when the office came, it was like, nah, this isn't worth it. Mm. It's like three hundred thousand. It's like like we've already seen we've seen a hundred thousand in three months in two months. Why would we take three hundred thousand and you own everything? Mm. And just for years, sense. for multiple years, four albums. I just What are those what are those meetings like? Um, it's cool. They just come in there and be hella nice, kiss your ass. Yeah, they you, try man, to wine and dine you. Yeah, what? Well, they'll take you to dinner. They tell you, man, you're like the, the best the thing best in the world. Best rapper in the world. Man, all this shit, man. They're like, dude, the never introduce you to his mom. Like, like, and as soon as your song cools down, man, this nigga won't answer the phone, all type of shit. Mm. So, like, that's, that's, that's label meetings. But, it's a good feeling to still be there, though. It means like you made, you've accomplished so much to be in a label meeting, in my opinion, at least. Like, 
you've you've done really well for yourself. You're headed to a great direction. But they're not they're not making like Mozzie get on the table and rap like Bobby Shmurda and shit like that. You <laughs> see you seen that clip where Bobby Shmurda <laughs> no, is like <laughs> it's funny. Nah, there there's like you It's leverage, right? So I would yeah. think Mozzie has more leverage going into a label meeting, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, I think uh, I think at the time, like Bobby at the time was like a young man with a hot with a buzzing song. And he going in there like, man. That was just a swag. Yeah, but this is my <laughs> shit, man. I'm a, I, like, I know if I, if it's the same way, they're trying to like convince you to work w- with them. Like you're trying to also convince them to work with you. Mm. So like, if I'm giving you this energy, imagine the energy I'll get when you give me a million dollars. Shit. So, uh, nah, man. All right. So back to that hundred thousand dollar check. Mm. What was the first thing you caught? Oh my God, bro. <laughs> No bullshit, $100,000 check. The next day, I bought two cars. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, bro. And it sounds so funny, but I swear to God, I bought two cars the next day. What kind? Um, I bought a BMW uh, S550. And then I bought a Mustang. <laughs> two, like At that time, it was like 2000 why two of them bro it was like this i'd already had it planned out i'm like i'm getting the fly car that i want as a bmw but i'm not driving it everywhere it's high on gas i'm getting a cool little cheap little mustang a little four-cylinder mustang super fly and i'm driving this is my everyday car because i'm not dogging the foreign and so and it was a smart idea it worked for me like when i drive to sacramento i never drove the bmw I like only drove it around LA. I drive the Mustang <laughs> everywhere. I thought I was the nigga, bro. And yeah, and at that time I was selling beats too, like on a on a frequent basis. So that hundred thousand was like, it was like, that was that was a good day. Because I I would think like, okay, I'm you never stop making beats, right? Nah, I never stop making beats. You still I make, make beats, beats to this day, hundred percent. I make beats a little differently than I used to. Then I try not to spend like. Then I would spend like hours and hours and nights of making beats. Now I like start ideas and like have people that I work with either try to finish them or like, um, cause I, it's like we said, I never, I know I'm not the best at everything. So like I'll play the piano and make a beat and then I'll have my guy who's the goat at piano and he'll redo the piano. And now it sounds like this is ready for, for Chris Brown or some shit like that. Yeah. Because I feel like at the most, at the highest level, it's a collaborative effort on it some has team to be. shit. If we're if we're trying to compete. Now, if I'm just trying to make some money, I could sell beats all day. Mm. But like I'm trying to get like add a plaque to the collection or, you know, some shit like that. Get some money off of it. I could sell you like a beat that I made myself and it's cool. Good. Great actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, there's a lot of lot of songs that that I have plaques that I made a hundred percent. So it's like I know you can too. Mm. But what was your what, what was any memorable ones? Um, uh, Hold on me was a really good one. That was Mozzy YG um, and G Easy. Um, I've done so much stuff for Mozzy. What was it called? It's called Hold on Me. It was like Mozzy's first song with YG. Mm. Super super fire. Uh, I've done a lot of shit. I'm a gangster for Mozzy. I've done um, bro, so much. Uh, I can't even think of songs. Afraid. I've done like mostly. I would say like 50% of my catalog I like uh, I worked on. And like 25% of that I did like solo. Wow. Bye. That's sick. <laughs> yeah, bye. That's sick. I mean, and I just think it's like, I think it's dope that you're able to be more collaborative now because it's like, you got every reason to be like, bro, I do this shit, you know? Yeah, but, and it's like, there's always like a new young nigga who's like, man, hard as shit. Like this dude right now from Sacramento, his name Julian Cannon. He's fire fire like it it, it, is hella reminds me of like like the sound i was working on early when i was younger but like like an enhanced a refined version and so like i'm never somebody who's like oh man i'm i'm great i don't need this man you're raw i can't make beats like you just like you probably can't make beats by like me just like you know if you made beats we we would if we all made a mozzie beat my beat would sound different from yours he would sound different and like he might have better drums. I might have better samples. You might have better keys. Mm. And like, what's the goal from this? Make an amazing song. So, what do you think? What do you think is more important skill, 
the ability to hear something and put pieces together like that or to be able to actually do it? I don't know. That's a really good question. Fuck. I think the ability to be able to find people. I think the, the technical stuff gets you in the door. And then it comes to that point where it's like, all right. Yeah, 100 percent. That's that's always how it is. But I seen somebody say like um, it's like basketball. An assist is better than a point because two people are happy. Mm. So like that's a bar. Like if I pass the ball to you and you scored, we still got a point. You made me look good. You look good. I think being able to find people is really, really doper because it's like um, you could just conquer some. Think about how much more you can conquer. Yeah, there's a lot of ball hogs out there, though, too. A lot of ball hogs. <laughs> oh, man, I come across them all the time. Ball hogs always pass the ball after. They try to shoot it. <laughs> no, no, no. What is it? It's a ball. Yeah. Ball hogs always pass the ball after you get more points per game than them. Mm. So, like, that's all I'll be looking at it. It's like, you don't got to pass me the ball, bro. There's a moment you're going to come to me to pass me the ball instead of me asking for it now. I've asked you for it 100 times. You want to pass it to me? No pressure, bro. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on the corner and wait for the rebound to come to me, and then I'm gonna slam dunk that shit. Facts. <laughs> Facts. All right. Like speaking of that, like from from what I remember, was Nipsey one of the first artists to, from LA to like link and like work with <sighs> with Mozzie, or was that just like one of those things where I remember I'm just like, damn, he got he got a nip a nip feature. No, I think the first person what, I would say is. I say Slim 400. R.I.P. Mm. Slim 400. First nigga in the world is Slim 400. Slim 400, um, R.I.P. Slim, man. Blim 400. I, he, he's the first L.A. artist. I would 100% say so. And okay. then it was YG. Okay. And then uh, Nipsey. Yeah, like how did that even, like, how does that even come come about? Um, Nipsey or YG? The Nipsey one. Uh, Nipsey, man. Um, uh, man, I was uh, cool with uh, Jay Stone. Shout out Jay Stone. And I was telling Mozzie, like, hey, bro, like, you know, Nipsey, fuck with your shit. Mozzie, like, no way Nipsey fuck with my, like, not like that, but like, man, bullshit. You know, at that time, it, people say anything. I'm like, nah, bro, like, the homie be telling me, you fuck with your shit. He like, I, you know, I don't know. Like, Nipsey is like, is like Jesus. So, like, you know, at that time, it's like, yeah, I, I, I hope so. But, like, you know, and so I told him, like, bro, let's uh go to that marathon store. They wanted us to pull up. And he like, man, I don't believe it. I'm like, nah, like, he said pull up. We pulled up. We ended up going to the studio with him. Made like two songs. Um, Nipsey was so real. He like, like, um, it was hella people in the studio. It was like Young Thug at the time. It was like Lil Durk was in the studio. Um, hella people. And like, Nipsey made sure to like, like really say like, hey, bro, y'all might not be familiar with bro, but he is right. the nigga. Like, he's the nigga out here. And um, just just hella love, like showed hella 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 love. But uh, yeah, that was the first. Okay, time. so it was slim, it was Slim Four Hundred and YG's camp, kind of that like for help like was the main ones to kind of bridge that NorCal Southern California gap. Yeah, I think they were all listening to Mozzie because you know LA, they you know they fuck with NorCal, especially like the street shit. But I think like. I think it was like everybody was kind of fucking with it on their own, but nobody was like, hey, y'all fucking with this shit? Yeah, people, I'm fucking with it. Like, I think it's a lot more common now, like that that mixture. For but sure. But I feel like it was kind of like a, no, nah, we got our shit up here. You got 100%. your shit down there. We kind of sound the same, but, you know, we're going to do our thing up here. You can do your thing down there. 100%. I think I think uh, I would love to say like Mozzie helped bridge, bridge that, that gap for sure. But yeah, I would say Slim 400 YG. Um, we ended up doing a show. They had a show in the Bay Area and they told us to pull up. Me and Mozzie pulled up. It showed us hella love. And uh, we had a hella good time. Went to the club, all type of shit. Yeah, because I mean, shit, what's, what's it like bringing YG to Oak Park and shooting oh, a fucking man. video in front of the, uh, the market? It's like I have like a few like staple moments throughout like Mozzie's career that I'm like very, very, very like. Damn, that was crazy. Bringing YG to Oak Park Market is like, it's one of those things. It's like, I hold that in like, almost like Black Panther sleepwalking. It's like, this is iconic for the city. I mean, yeah, I don't, like, I've seen that shit. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, that was, that was dope. That was dope. Super dope, actually. Like, like, and it, like, I thought the police were going to shut us down at some point. They didn't. It was like, that was, that was my biggest fear of the day. 
was like, we're going to bring them out here. We're going to try to shoot a video. The police are going to shut us down. Really? And uh, we dug it. Because it was like, you're not applying for permits and shit, <laughs> right? No, no, you can't. <laughs> Mozzie would never get approved for a permit in Sacramento. Fuck. Bumping Oak Park is a crazy song, crazy moment for Sacramento. Like, you only have to do it once. Like, you, I always say that. Like, you brought, you bring somebody to the hood, this is crazy. No, yeah, I mean, shit. He's, I mean, speaking on the uh, Black Panther, like, how did that even come about? Like, um, dope, man. Black Panther was just uh, me and J Rock from TD. Um, me and him had a super, really good relationship. Um, even before him and Mozzie met, me and J Rock were really, really close. And um, he kind of was just like, hey, yo, he used to always tell me Kendrick loved Mozzie music. And uh, he was like, Intro yeah, he introduced us for sure, but this is before he introduced us. Um, they was working on Black Panther. He just hit me like, hey, there might be a song like, you know, you want Mozzie on. And uh, I played it for Mozzie, and he, Mozzie just didn't even get it. He was like, he'll tell you, he was like, just tell me what to rap. I'm like, here, right here. He rapped on it. And then when the shit came out, he was like, what the fuck? I mean, that soundtrack is pretty legendary for just 100%. music. I feel like it kind of helped bring back, like, people paying attention to, like, movie sure. soundtracks and, and the hip-hop sure. scene. For sure. I think, I, I would say 100%. And it was just good for, like, the black culture, too. Like, if you black, you know what I mean, and you were part of Black Panther, that is just, like, crazy. Was was this before or after the the Grammy shout out from Kendrick? Oof, that's a good question. I think this is before. Okay. I think this is before. Okay. And how do you how how do you feel about that Grammy shout out? Man, that was crazy. That was, it's another moment I remember. We were in Houston, and um, we were with Trade the Truth. We were on the way to meet up with Trade the Truth, and like, at me and Mozzie's phone would not stop ringing. <laughs> And like we're we're declining it because we're in the car headed somewhere. And we're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, Gazi's calling me. Then he called Mozzie. Then Nima called me. Then like, like YG or like it was just everybody was like, hold on, you what knew is something was happening. Yeah, like, is there like a, a bomb threat or something? Like, what's going on? And uh, we ended up somebody ended up sending us the clip, and it was like, what the fuck? And. You know, like, you know, people like get excited, Drake will say something, you think that he said their name and they do a video, then it comes out he said something else. We were like, nah, maybe he's like, maybe he's talking about somebody else. But yeah, that was, that was a crazy moment. It's unbelievable. Yeah, because I seen that as a fan, right? And yeah. I was like, this is crazy. Crazy. This, this is, is fucking Lamar. wild on the Grammy stage and shit. I was just curious to get your, get your take on it because. I always, I always thought it was one up top. Like, <laughs> no, no, for sure. I, I, I was like, oh man. I was like, I, listen, the God always up top is tight, but I was, I thought it was one up top, Aki. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's funny because I'm surprised nobody ever asked that. But like, at that point, you don't even give a fuck. No, no, no. It's like, can he go up there and say one up top? Maybe he probably shouldn't go up there and say <laughs> one up top at the Grammys. Like, or like, bro, he could have said like. He could have said one word, it would have been amazing. He could have said anything. Anything. anything and he in the drops Mozzie's name, bro. Yeah, he could have said like Mozzie said. I drive the same car as Mozzie, and it would have been like amazing. Wow. So like God, I, I, Kendrick Lamar could do no wrong. That was that was such a sick moment, bro. Crazy. Crazy, Crazy. for the city too. Crazy. You know, I'm just like, holy shit. Crazy. I mean, do you ever you feel like you I work you've worked with the biggest of the biggest now? Um, yeah. Like, I'm do you ever get, like, like, you know, starstruck or, you know what I'm saying, feel some type of way, like, collaborating yeah. with people? Bro, you want to know somebody, everybody asked me this, the person who I really had to stop and say, I need a picture with you, was Lil John. And, and I've been around a lot of people, people I never take pictures with. Lil John was the one person I had to walk up to and say, hey, bro, I need a picture with you. Is have it, you made music with him? Um, I have not. Mm. But it's like, I could... But like I just I just haven't I just I, I just haven't for some reason I don't know why but I just he he's the goat. Did you post that pic? For sure, posted that <laughs> picture. That's Lil John. Like if I accidentally to take a picture, this this is going on a gram. <laughs> Damn, what? Cause just cause he just was so influential to you as a Bro, kid so or what? Influential. Um, like I, I go I always say this. Um, Lil John made "Tell Me When to Go" beat. He made "You and That" beat. He made 
muscle cars. He made blow the whistle. Yeah, I was like, he was probably. I heard he, he was involved shake with that monkey. Damn. Think about these classic. Like he is almost. Think about when you think about the hyphy movement. He is a staple of the hyphy movement. He is from Atlanta. He also gave you Yin Gang Twins. He also gave you like all these Lil John songs in the world. Wow. He's the goat. He's the goat. How did he link up with the Bay? Was it too short? Um, you know, they all ended up signing deals back in the day. So, like, um, E-40 had a deal with Jive years, years ago. So, like, when Tell Me When It Came, Tell Me When It Go came out and, like, he made Snap Your Fingers. Like, wow. <laughs> bro, he made, Damn. like, crazy, crazy records. Him making Muscle Cars and Blow the Whistle and Tell Me When It Go is, like, very, Those are anthems those for are the Bay. anthems, <laughs> like, that you thought somebody in... The barrier in their bedroom made these beats, and this is fucking Lil John. And he's also making this crunk music, like, like that's a sound. Like making a barrier hypey sound, and then making crunk sound at the same time is, is unbelievable, in my opinion. That's actually pretty legendary. I really <laughs> had no idea, but that's some hip hop history, bro. First CD I stole was uh, yeah, the AT- Gang Twins. So like, think about it. He he. he it's crazy. So I had to take a picture with it. It makes sense. I had to take a picture with it. It makes sense. Five. So now you're established in the industry, right? Like what what do you like doing the most? Do you like managing, you like producing or like A and Ring and like bringing stuff together? Um I always combine managing and A and R and com- together. It shouldn't be, but I just combine them together for me and I think that's like Always going to be the best for me. I think I would say A&R, but because it's just fun. It's and like, what does an A&R even do? Um, just make great music. Right. I don't think there's a, there shouldn't be like any other like definition of it. Just making great music. Like being able to like, sometimes like I might hear a sound that's like going on. Like I might play Mozzie some beats. Like these, this is like a 16 year old producer in Sacramento. This is like a, the sound that you've made popular is evolving. Like, we should try this. Or like, hey, man, you should do like, excuse me, you should do like this type of song. Some left field, but like, let's just try it. Let's like, it's like a way to, it's like full creativity. Mm. And you could try hella shit. Like, no, no, no rules. Everything else is like, got to do it the right way. How, how do you even get the title of a and Like, how did that even come about? I would say like, like me working at a label a and Oh, okay. Was like, um, I guess is how I, I got the actual title. Because like, I feel like there's a lot of A&Rs out there that aren't getting paid as an A&R. You yeah, know? that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I don't know. I feel like I was an A&R back in the day. I used to tell Showbanger, bro, like, I introduced Showbanger to June on the beat. Like, hey, bro, there's this producer you need to come work with. That's an A&R. And we may not have been there. You know what I mean? Which is like, remember I've been there was like a huge song. Yeah. Like, like. God, like, such a great time. Introduced such a great time. to like June and the, and Famous came about. Oh. Think about the moment Famous came out. Like that was like the biggest moment for Sacramento. And like A and R is just that. Linking people up, making great music, being like the the middleman to shit. What are what's some what's some shit you've A and R'd? Like some Um shit, I did um uh, Lemonade for Don Tolliver. That was a great one. Um which I think was like Top two biggest songs of the year. That's kind of left field too. Don yeah, Tolliver coming from, going from Mozzie to Don Tolliver. Yeah, so I, I'm uh, Don Tolliver's A and R. So like I've been his A and R for like I would say three, four years now. Three wow, years. he three had years. one of my favorite favorite albums last year. Fine, He's nah, hard. that's fine. Yeah, He's yeah. I've been, uh, I did a lot of shit for him. Um, of course, stuff for Mozzie. Um, I did Fast and the Furious soundtrack. Oh yeah, um, I'm not really a pop my shit type person. So like, nah, talk your shit, yeah, David. Like, I'm gonna clip it. <laughs> I've, done a, I've done a lot of like a lot of music with like a lot of people. Like, like certain songs that might not even be b- the biggest songs. They just mean like a lot to me. Like famous, famous just means a lot. Like, yeah, that one's that's one of the ones. I got so many mo- favorite Mozzie songs. Yeah, like hell, like, like I have I have too many favorite Mozzie songs. I've like like I'm a, I. I'm a fan of different forms of Mozzie. So yeah, there was like yeah. different eras and shit. Yeah. Like the gang, the gangland landscape, yeah, era, bro, all that shit. Bro, the property of the Ave is one of my favorites, bro. And then also like the free Yada ones. Free Yada. Those are always a. I would love to see a, a Mozzie Yada. Uh, I always do too. Album. Yada's like. 
Y'all know the same, same person. Like, I, I, I hit him like, hey, bro, you got it. You got it. Like, um, I remember before he ended up going to jail, like, I think, like, a couple weeks, a week before he, he came to L.A., me and him made, uh, me, him, and Yace, R.P. Yace. R.P. Yace. We made, uh, uh, like, three songs. And uh, Yace, uh, uh, Yace was raw. Y'all, y'all are raw, too. He he gave you the same feeling sometimes as Mozzie. Like, bro, this guy's dangerous. Well, yeah, I'm just amazed. <laughs> I'm just amazed, like, damn, bro, like, your shit is hard recording off a of phone. Crazy. But that's but that's what I mean though. It's like people who are talented. I don't care how it ever comes out, their talent is gonna be so good that we'll listen to it anyway. We'll listen to it over a fucking speakerphone. Like it's fire. But are you helping like mixing that and shit like that? Uh, I, I've done a lot of shit for y'all. I, I mixed a few of his early early albums. I think he got like some. He he'd be like running his own place. But well, more specifically, like the free yada the free yada song and oh, free yeah, yada yeah, part yeah. two. Like yeah. he he recorded that behind bars, right? Free Yada Part Two, he recorded behind bars. Free Yada Part One, he recorded outside of bars. Oh, okay. And um, he had already recorded Free Yada One. I was just like, this song so fire, Mozzie, you gotta jump on this. There's like hella songs where like, like, I I like anti and like Free Yada, where I was like, yo, Maz, this song is so fire, and you're fire, like, take this to the next level, like, <laughs> let's turn up. Uh, it's like you see like like Sexy Ray came out then you see everybody remix it it's just it's fun it's like if I'm off this shit I gotta spit on it gotta, gotta do something with it gotta 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 introduce it to my audience yeah you know what I mean but, but there's no there, so there's no like uh, Mozzie Dave of, uh, songs out there nah fuck no <laughs> Like, we we be in the studio, he'll, he'll be like, man, I know you got some, man. Go in there. Yeah, like, I know that. I know bro. you've recorded some shit, Damn, Devo. Bro, I just I'll just shoot imagine. the video. We can do it, man. <laughs> nah, I tell you, I tell everybody this. When you're a producer, you make, you start rapping like the person you make the most beats for. Mm. So it's like, I couldn't imagine that I'd go in the studio and make a rap and not use a Mozzie flow. That would and that would bug me, <laughs> like like everybody like man, it, it would it just it would bug me. But like when you make beats, you make beats with the person's flow in your brain. Like I say, you'd be like, oh man, he's gonna, he's he'll tell you. I'll send him a beat, say, I know you're gonna love this beat, and then he'll be like, pull this up as soon as we get to the studio. It's like like you know their sound, so you you know. So I, I would rap like him. What's the recording process like? Does it take a long time? Fuck no, man. Like, we would come in there. Usually I have, like, the beats that I already like. You know what I mean? And I think he would like, and he'll run through them. He's, he'll just... He just raps on it. He, he raps too good, so he'll just... First beat I play, like, pull it up. <laughs> that simple. We'll make five beat, five songs in a day, and then he'll be like, yeah, hey, I'm kind of... If I rap anymore, I'm going to give you bullshit. Mm. And then we just we just... Shit, that's, but that's, you work with like a variety of artists, right? I mean, you just sure. mentioned Don Tolliver and shit. Like, yeah. like, are they usually banging shit out, or is it is it like a long ass process? You know, like with funny. Lemonade, it just depends the day. Like, it really depends the day, bro. Like, we might come in here and have a six hour session, and we're just kicking it, watching fucking YouTube videos, just to set us up for the next day where we get in here and make seven songs. Mm. Um, Don Tolliver is super easy too. He's like my boy. He, me and we have the same relationship, like Mozzie. So it's like. I'll have him. I have an idea. He'd be like, eh, I don't know, but Lemonade was one. I like. He did not like the song, mm-hmm. and like, I, I was telling him this should be on your album. This should be the song. Like, he was like, I'm gonna do it just because I'm gonna work on this song just because I fuck with you, and then um, song gonna be in that. So like, I mean, I, that song is just pretty legendary. Well, you had you had Gunna on it. Yep, Gunna. It was a. Taz Taylor. Taz Taylor. Shout out my boy Taz. And it was a Cole Bennett video. Cole Bennett and that video. was on it too, right? That was on it for sure. So I'm just like, I had no idea. Like, Yeah, I did that song like from like the ground too, from like the ground up from the beginning. That was like your baby? Yeah, it was like one, one of my babies. Me and Taz Taylor, man, we had, there's like six versions at least of, of Lemonade before it got to like the final, I would say over six, probably like 15 of just new beats, new structures, new like, like man how'd you get linked up with taz taylor uh i've been doing taz for like a long time like even pre mozzie like i knew taz like when he was first starting i was first starting i was just out out in la roaming around he had the internet money he's internet money right yeah yeah that's his brand he started i'm trying to think what's he internet money 
I would think so. I think, but this is probably like Taz, Taylor, Internet Money, maybe like three producers. So you guys get, but you kind of help, you guys both kind of grew. Yeah, like, but hella separately. Yeah, like, yeah, like, like just totally grew, separate genres and shit like that. kept seeing each other over and over, like, oh, my boy, my boy, as we both got more and more successful. And so Lemonade was like, I mean, I knew he was working on his album and um, trying to put out singles and like, that was it. It was like, um, Don really didn't want to put the song out as his. And I'm like, man, if I find somebody, if I find a home for this song, and he was like, all right, I'm with it. And Taz Taylor was the perfect home. Wow. And we have like, going to be a diamond song. So how many times on the journey were, were you told no? Oh, man, I get told no to this day still. All the time. Because that's, I, I, I seen this clip where it's just like, you know, most successful people, they don't take that shit. They don't take no as an answer. You know what I'm saying? Nah, shit, no. You know, people, it, like, I hear no all the time. And it's like, all right, I'll just do it myself. Like, 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 as you see, it's like having random basketball ideas. Like, hey, man, let's just, like, you do it ourselves. It might, like, it might not work, might work. But, like, I'm not going to take no. If we have an idea and we want to do it, well, let's do it. I mean, I just think even with Lemonade, like, you could have just been like, all right, the idea is dead if, like, Don, like... Nah, but see, I just... Look, that's why I said, like, I would do music. A&R is, like, a fun thing. It's, like... It's, like, if you created, like, a shoe, you would wear the shoe because you created it. It's, like, like everything that, like, what you think is the best version of it, you made it. Like, I'm going to wear this. So, like, with music, I made this song. I think this is a great song. This has to come out. The people got to hear this. And uh, I, I think... No, it's never an answer. Like, what are we talking about? Unless... It's sexual. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Facts. Facts. <laughs> Holy shit. So, I mean, does he, is he like, I, I should have listened to you type shit or like behind, the, or does that just like make you more credible after the yeah, fact? I think it just makes you more credible. That's when I say good A&R, you're just adding value because those moments are much needed for you to be a successful A&R manager. It needs to be like, not I told you so moments, but like, ooh, I'm glad I listened to this guy. I feel like those are what make the best of the best. Did you ever have to deal with any like doubts or wanting to quit through this process? All the time. I think uh, I think only moments I get like that are like when people who I like, I see more in than them or like I care about and they do something that's like, ah, fuck, man, like... I really fucked with you and like this almost like nigga, you really I don't there's not too many people that can hurt my feelings you know what I mean it's like like I can see shit coming a mile away I'm from like you know a tough city so like shit we've seen it all you know what I mean so like but when you, you know how it goes it's like somebody you consider a friend do something for like you know whether it's like their gain or whatever and it stems from music that's like the, the moments I'd be like ooh this is kind of grimy I mean it's the music industry is pretty cutthroat. The cutthroat. entertainment in industry is like, they don't really go by the same principles. Hell no. Nah. Hell no, nah, man. There's so much money at stake. People like, you see people's morals go out the window. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy too. It's like witnessing people lose themselves or, you know, go against their morals just for, for that sure. bag. I tell people all the time, if I was like, if I, if I didn't care, I'd have $10 million. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be like rich, rich. Like I would be rich, but like, I just, I give a fuck about people, I get, which I don't regret at all. Like I have, I sleep, I have a great life. I sleep good at night. I don't have to like, every person in the room can speak well upon me. Like I, I that's, I like that. Yeah. That's kind of how I operate too, where it's just like. There's long, I'm thinking longevity. For sure. You know, and also to energy and like just how you treat people. That shit will Very come back much. to you. Very much, man. Like you never know. And, and you don't do it because of that. But you never know. Like you never know when you'll need somebody. And so it's like, bro, that's why you treat everybody how like, like not, you know, not to be cliche, how you'd want to be treated. Because like, man, like the people you see on the way like up, you have to see on the way down. And shit I, I just live by that live by that ever. i mean shit especially bro especially working with like a music like artist like bro like artists fall off 
artists for sure. stop. You know, for you sure. could have a two year run. Feel no. like you're him. We've seen it. We've seen six month runs. You guys, you guys, you guys outlasted a lot of fucking people. Yeah, nah, facts, facts. We definitely talk about that a lot. Like it's like a, a good feeling. I think he's on like his ninth year right now. God damn. What's What's next? Man, um, just for him, we have an album about to come out, and um, it's crazy. It's like you know he, he's still he's still going strong. It's like like it's kind of like it's kind of scary though. It's like at this point you would almost think like man, only thing you could do is go down and so. But like he's still still like slow climb up, and that's that's what I'm going for, man. But Grammy, hopefully we get this Grammy. Really? That's what you're going for? Yeah, and Mozzie and Killer Mike got a song that's not made it for a Grammy, man. If we bring a Grammy to sack, <sighs> niggas ain't going to know how to act. <laughs> <laughs> Grammy to sack, bro? You, you take it, you're drinking out the cup, like... Man. No, nah, I'm just taking... You just got to set it in front of iconic places in Sacramento. That's what I would do. With the beam lit right there? With the beam lit, like... I'm courtside at the Kings game like, with my shit. <laughs> like, in front of Oak Park Market, in front of, like... <laughs> Like just ran in front of Arden Fair Mall, just right there, just crazy moments. Like man, that's crazy. That's what I would do. It's this Grammys coming up. This Grammys, bro. So this like relatively soon. Very soon, man. I, man. So if you're watching this and you have an electoral vote for the Grammys, please vote for. Are you gonna get to go? For sure, we're gonna go. That's your first time going. I don't think we went to the Grammys. Woo. We knew a lot of awards. I know that sounds crazy. We had to really think. I think, and. No, you know what? We went to the we could have gone to the Grammys so many times. One time me and Mozzie went to the Grammys and he felt like he wasn't dressed correctly, so we left. We said we we're gonna go back and we never went back. We left <laughs> we left the uh, our PR homie hanging. <laughs> but, but like Mozzie hates like award shows and like all that shit. He's starting to love it now. Hey, over the years he's hated it. Mm. Hate it. No, it's like, no, like Grammys is one of those ones where it's like, man, no. it's like him. You have to like when we went to the BET Awards. It's like, oh, okay, I can do this. This this is cool. This is fun. Like, I think you'd be forgetting he the nigga. So when you, he gets there at times, and every like big rappers like show him hella love. It's like, oh, okay, I can do this. You can't leak any information on the album or what? We got any? Yeah, he got an album. Um, I don't know when this is coming out, but by the time this comes out, I'm assuming um, his pre order will be up. But uh, yeah. His album will be out within the next sixty days. What was when was this recorded? January seventeenth. So yeah. Hey I man, well, I'm excited, bro. I appreciate you taking the time to sit down. Thank you for what you do on behalf of just the city. You know what I'm Love, saying? Man. You're you're a goat in this shit. Hey, so you before know? we end this, man. So tell us about you. How did you like? What is like your your five key moments that you remember in your career that are like. Jesus well, Christ, this is kind of dope. I'm still in it yet, you know. I'm still sure. in that surviving stage type <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? I got no. You uh, know what's, what your, what's your what's your what's a, what's two moments though that you were like, man, I'm on the right track? Shit, I mean, fuck, just sitting down. This is probably one of them. You know what I'm saying, bro? I was I DM'd you, you, Trevor Potter, bro. I DM'd you like. I just remember just bugging you, you know, just like trying to just tap in, just trying to link up, trying to just do something because I'm just like, bro, I just fuck with this dude. I mean, I think probably like shooting the music video with this dude Swaco and Travis Barker. That's nuts. I, I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I did. I, I, I shot and ed, I did the whole thing pretty much. That's fire. And just working with Travis Barker was pretty sick. Pretty I had fire. To take a pic. Yeah, pretty, that, that was probably one of them ones. Yeah. I feel that. That was I one feel of those that. ones. Yeah, nah. Because and, and, at the same time, bro, I remember like, I feel like now there's like a few more coming out of Sacramento, but like, you Trevor Potter, bro. Like, I appreciate that. That, that means a lot. Shit, bro. That means like, a lot. Like, like, that's crazy. Like, in that, like, you know, I'm in the music space, in your space, that is fucking crazy. Like, to come from Sacramento. Like, I always see, when I used to see at a, a No Jumping Spot with all the other homies from Sacramento, I'm like, this is hard as fuck. <laughs> it's, bro, L.A. is so expensive when you thugging it. So, moving from Sacramento to L.A., is nowhere near easy yeah. at all. It is probably like we've seen people go to LA and be like, "Man, I moved to LA four months. They back in Sacramento." Yeah, that's the scariest Bro, thing. Oh, that shit is tough. So, like, how long you been out here? I've been out here probably three, four years Woo! 
Ooh, you made it. And actually, I do I, one legendary thing that I do actually remember that I just want to, you know, flex. I was at Dan Bilzerian's house with Adam smoking a blunt in his living room. Me, Dan Bilzerian, and Adam right there in his fucking private That's private chef was like crazy. making us dinner and shit. We just I did an interview like Adam did an interview with him. Yeah. But like I set it up and it was just me and Adam. We set up the cameras, crazy. did it downstairs, and then he just invited us, gave a whole tour of the spot. I was like, this shit. How do you feel <laughs> when you left? I was high as fuck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I remember me and Adam were in the Uber like, damn, like, like <laughs> you know when you get hella high and you're just like fucking overthinking shit? For sure. But that was one of those ones where I'm just like, holy shit, I'm really in the mix. Did it motivate you? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, bro. Just like being able to do this interview shit and just make content. I'm more on like some content shit now. I like, fuck with like, that. I like making interviews or doing interviews, but it's like, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I don't know. I feel like the interview game is just kind of really fucked up right now. I feel people you. are doing it for the wrong reasons. And they're just sitting down with people they don't even really give a fuck about. For sure. I feel that. And and it's like sometimes you're now forced to interview people who aren't even have a personality. Yeah. Or that even don't even want to talk to me. Yeah, you know what I'm sure. saying? Like, bro, what? Sure. Like, what are we doing here? This is you not going to be saying? a good conversation. Exactly. And it's like, bro, I could, ask, I could ask. And I've done that shit where I just ask, you know, the basic ass questions. And, you know, it will do some numbers. But it's like, man, I'm trying to sit down with people who... One, inspire me, motivate me, or have some good game I that, that I can share with the world. That's how I am. I feel that. I feel the fuck out of that. I, you know why? You're a Pisces. Yeah, for sure. I'm a Pisces, too. I was born March 11th. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I'm March 15th. Bro, I never really believed in that, like, me neither. I Zodiac feel, shit. Bro. But in this industry, bro, there's a lot of us. I tell my girl, she be like, oh, this is compatible. I'm like, man, that shit is bullshit. But it be it do be seeming correct. I like, ain't gonna lie. Like, all right, man, I could tell how you move. For sure. Like, all right, you're cut from that cloth. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. I feel the fuck out of that. Uh, yeah, man, this is dope. I'm excited for the uh, for the Mazi album, of course, man, and all this basketball content. Oh, We're yeah. going crazy. We're going that. Hey, at this exact moment, man, we did a hundred thousand views in two days on a new YouTube channel, bro. My boy turned me up, man. I had this idea. He he took it to the moon come on man so like uh i don't even talk about touch that 100K. yeah you don't really talk about I don't it talk about it on my instagram at all i'm waiting for it to get, do like millions of views and i could be like all right is this my shit yeah once you get that plaque yeah once that i get the 100K plaque, plaque yeah it's like all right pop but it. but it's gonna be there bro it's gonna be there for sure you know just working with you that's what i'm saying like just working seeing how you how you operate like that i'm telling you bro just, the fact that you edited your own shit I was just like, this man is different. This yeah, man is different. It's, it's, there's a reason why you have all this shit. <laughs> nah, I appreciate you know? that. I was definitely, I, I was on a binge. I was on a YouTube tutorial binge. You were calling me, yeah. <laughs> yeah I called Trevor like, bro, at least in a week, at least 10 times. Like, hey, bro, what is uh, Aperture? What is like ISO? What's like uh, You what? learned it. You learned <laughs> it all. Yeah, I almost gave up. I texted my, hey, bro, I think my camera's broke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, GLD, I'm about to get rid of this shit, bro. I think it's broke, bro. He's like, nah, man, I just used it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was perfectly fine. I remember you were calling me like, bro, why doesn't it look like your shit? <laughs> yeah, for I'm sure. Like, my shit is like $10,000 right now, bro. Yeah, like, bro. I, I thought, man, I thought I thought you could cheat the game, bro. I thought, <laughs> I thought it was hella easy, but it ain't. That shit is a real, real, I could, I could see why, like, Bro, it's a real craft. Like I, 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 I respect like I respect everybody behind a lens because that shit is like. This example, I said like producers. It's like music can't happen without a producer. Music can't be big without a visual, and like that shit is not easy. And it, it falls on you if like you record something and like it's not well lit, and then. The music video is hella dark. The dude's face. Everybody's like, "Hey man, can you just uh turn my face up?" And you're like, "Nah, nah bro." So you feel like you found like a new a new respect for it, or you've always kind of been because you've been nah. in the game, you know? What yeah, I'm no, like, I've had a, I've had a respect for it for a long, long time. Honestly, um, I think that's why like I come to you for things. Mm -hmm. It's like I know that I like there's a million people with a camera. There's people who might even charge 
25% of the price, but it's like, nah, I know better. I know like this shit is a real craft. It's like same amount of hours I put in for my craft. This person has put in this amount of hours for their craft. So like this is going to be like, like top tier. You know what I mean? So, nah, man, because that's just one struggle where it's just like, oh, just click record. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, it's not that easy. Hey, what is, how disrespectful is the term cameraman? I mean, it, I think it just depends on, on the space, you know, like what you're shooting. Like, for example, if I'm following you around, I'm your cameraman, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm doing some vlog shit, I some document, that's the cameraman. I'm not, I guess I'm directing, but really I'm just capturing I you know, that. if you want to get technical, you, you call me like the director of photography, but it's like I'm not. I feel it. so. You don't take no, that. no, no shit if it's like somebody be like, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, hey cameraman, hey bro, take a picture, bro. Yeah, like I don't know, I've, I've definitely had times where it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but at the end <laughs> of the day, it's like, it's like whatever, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna let that get to me. Hey, but laughing. dudes are crazy though. Bro, I know we finna end this, bro, but I got a funny story. I remember uh we called this dude security guard. And he was like, hey bro, uh, can you don't call me security guard? I'm like, oh my fault, bro. Like, and I'm not saying it to like belittle you or that. I'm like, I'm like, hey no, he's our security guard. And he's like, uh, I'm like, like, what do y'all call it? Like, he's like, bodyguard. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit, my bad, bro. So like, that's what I always, always ask, man. It's like a nigga be like, yeah, he's a beat maker. Be yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, man. There's just there's a lot of shit you got to deal with, bro. Just being a it. cameraman, I guess you you know, like it is what it is. But yeah, it's, I'm at that point now where it's just like, all right, man, I got ten years in the game, bro. It's like, I feel you. I'm not. I'm, I don't just. I don't just click record. You know, nah, I really sure. do this shit, for sure. and I know how to do this shit in all different environments. Because filmmaking, bro, is a lot of dis quick decision making for sure, and understanding your environment for sure. So it's just like, bro, it's like, I mean, the, a basketball fucking video is technically the same but it's way different than nah. a music video than when i see uh, your story bro i was like damn you post like the basketball shit did 100k in two days it was like Duno shit was on there did 100k and it was like big shit i'm like damn like that is equivalent to a producer posting like three new songs that just dropped different genres and they're going crazy yeah, yeah. That's, why, that's why that's why i said damn bro going crazy bro because it's like I appreciate that's that. the equivalent of that it's like a producer being like oh yeah yg new song just came out uh mozzie new song just came out and uh kendrick lamar new song just came out and they're all three like going right, crazy right that's uh, that's fine yeah that's kind of like the story of my life right now where i'm just like you know there's no beat tag you know what I'm saying? On my videos, that. like I feel that. Sometimes, you know, I feel that. Sometimes you could put I, I like for music videos. I had like a little tag, but like some when you get in like some professional stuff, it's like yeah, that really, is crazy. I didn't think about that. You're not really getting a lot of credit sometimes. That's fucked up. But it's like if you know, you know. But it's hard to know. Damn. Because I mean, are have people ever requested like, don't put your B tag on this? Yeah, for sure. You know, people always ask why I don't use my beat tag anymore because I always felt like my beat tag was very Northern California ish. Like when you go to other places, make me a slap. It's like people are like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like they're like slap. Like what? What is that? So I, I, I very much stopped using my tag just because of that. You got to bring it back. I know. I want to say it in a like a way. like a two point version, a yeah, remix 2 version. Yeah, two version, bro. I got got to figure that shit out. All right, hold on. Yeah, before we wrap up though. Who are some some of your favorite beat makers or producers? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who are some of my favorite producers, like locally or just like? Nah, just time? like in in the hip hop space. In the history, from the Pharrells to Scott Storches to all that shit. Uh, in the history, best producer in the world has been Lil John, in my opinion. Um, after that, I make I start making biased like damn biased statements and people are gonna say this nigga's fucking crazy but like i go off of just the moments i had in my life and like i would put dj mustard like top two top three because think about think about your great moments like songs you remember we just played a song that you were trying to think of what the what the hook was yeah. 
It was a DJ Mustard B. If you think about your high school, you think about like going to house parties, like the first time like you got a lap dance, like or like certain environments. It was getting broke off on the wall. Yeah, was it <laughs> DJ Mustard, whether it was YG or like I don't know. Tyler. There might have been a lot. There there was some HBK songs in oh, there. Oh no, for that, sure. You know yeah, there no, was some sure. Sage songs. No, hundred was... percent. I, I would put I put Lil John. I'd say Mustard. I would say um I would have to say one of my favorite producers, I would definitely have to say June on a beat. Mm. Um, just like I said, it's just moments in life where I had great moments off of this this vibe. I would have to Damn, it's a lot of people. This is a tough one. I would have to say I would have to put Pilo in there. Cause that's just my my life. Um Oof. I think Damn. Pharrell Pharrell's one of my favorites. See, I love Pharrell. Damn, see, I shouldn't even say these type of things on camera, but I love Pharrell. Like, grinding was amazing, but, like, what's a... But we also have two different lives. What was, like, the Pharrell song that's, like, your your theme song of uh, era of your life? See, I look at it different. I'm looking at it like, all right, his longevity in the game and his his style. Like, he's he's made... He's created his own sound where it's, like, no matter who's on it, you know it's a Pharrell beat, which I think that's dope. See, I understand that. But but then it's like, once you start saying that, it's like whoever has accomplished more would be your favorite producer, not who is like, to me, my favorite producer is like who I enjoyed their music. It's a more of an emotional me. connection. Yeah, like who, yeah, I, I get that. who I had the most great moments off of is like, 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 like I said, like I could put June on a beat in that category with uh Lil John or like a DJ Mustard just because the moments like like I had like this niggas like if you don't like hyphy music you might say fuck Lil John. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But like if if you respect this, you know, this sound you you would agree. Who's mm-hmm. yours? Who's all right not, like not on producers, some emotional shit? Not even producers. Who's your favorite videographers, directors of photographies? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, shit, dude. I really fuck with, I mean, on some local shit, I fuck with, with Colin Tilly. For sure. Colin fuck. David Camarena, I'm pretty sure yeah. his name is. David Camarena is a goat. Hard, he's bro. Done, so he done, sick. He done hella shit for us. So like, sick. D-Cam is like a goat. He was on tour with Wiz and, and Burner back in the day. What? Doing the day-to-days, bro. I was bro, watching the day-to-days. David a- Camarena is a goat. Yes, man. I would love to uh, sit down with him. I mean, but also too, like Cole Bennett is one of those ones for, for me. Sure. Where I'm just like, hats off, bro. I <laughs> for sure. You know what I'm saying? I think it's dope to see where Cole Bennett came from too, and like he's had his own style and just stuck with his style and it worked out for him. Yeah, he's really, and he's just built like, bro. The, just the fact he's able to have a festival, throw shows. What are we talking about? Has music now? He just dropped the whole album. Crazy, crazy. He actually has a really good song on there. Side note. Uh, <laughs> With Jack Harlow, you heard that song? That beat, it's oh, like Jack Harlow yeah, yeah. and Dave. And Dave, they that just... beat is incredible. Like when I, I when I hear certain songs, I might not even be such a fan of the songs, or I might be a fan of the song, but like an element, that beat is amazing. Beat side note, just randomly. No, yeah, I know it's funny because Jack Harlow is a super big Mozzie fan. It seems like for sure because you know Mozzie. early early on when he was like pretty pretty popping or whatever yeah. i remember he had a show at harlow's yeah and he fucking was tagging like you yeah, know he, he, and shit. he's hit like we've had we've talked like we just i don't know why we haven't done a song yet but like he definitely is like yo let's let's work yeah i fuck with jack harlow Man, he, got, he got some seasoning in him that's Pause. Sick. <laughs> 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 yeah man well shit i appreciate you for taking the time Love, my boy uh you know album coming out soon like I said, the basketball shit coming out. And, you know, let's just continue to get this shit going, man. For Say the that. city, man. Good when a hey, SAC people in L.A., it's like we're automatically locked in. You Bro, know, it's like. If, if you see it, you from Sacramento, you see a SAC nigga getting in a fight in L.A., you got to jump in. Low key, yeah. You got to like, jump in. Or oh, they're going to tell the story to Sacramento and they start <laughs> going around. It's like, bro, you let Trevor get jumped. That's a club. It's like, damn. But, yeah. Man, nah, that's facts. For sure. All right, man. Like, comment, subscribe. We out of here. For sure.